Okay, it didn't make sense to me as a six-year-old. All this begat. Also, what didn't make sense to me uh, is that how could you produce a whole planet? How could you produce a whole city of people when I was six years old? I was just two people. Because everybody knew, even at six and seven, you knew you weren't supposed to have sex with your sister. Okay, that was like, you know, even then. So I asked my mother, and I said, Mom, so this religion stuff, this Christian religion stuff, um, I mean, is there a God? Uh, who was Adam and Eve? Uh, what is the daddy? Um, and, and my mom explained it to, to me in such a way that intrigued me uh, that I started my interest. So when I was about 12 or 13, I read a book called uh, Holy Blood, Holy Grail. And my grandfather was a Masonic uh, for the nation for about 60 years of his life. I do him. I'm a 32nd degree status right now. Uh, Blue Lodge, San Fernando, 343, for 30 years. And that was interesting to me because in reading about King Solomon in the Old Testament and then doing homework on Solomon, the real Solomon, and it all interested. History interested. And that led to the, to the ambiguity of his from researchers and scholars and what we were taught, which has consistently led me down the path of understanding a couple of months. So that's how that started early in my life. And so today? So today, uh, for my decade of the 40s, between 40 and 50, I was a really angry person because I just, people, I couldn't get Americans to understand what the hell was happening to our country and what was happening to the earth uh, in terms of the, the few families that run the economics of the planet and actually control life and death as we know it. Uh, well, because nobody so, wants to believe that it's really that microcosmic. Everybody would like to believe they have free will. They don't exactly. realize that they're, they're fucking indentured them. servants as sheeple. If you work for someone else, you're a slave. You're a slave whether you work for somebody else or not. Because because in order to survive on this planet, short of going out and living in a cave and living a mountain man's lifestyle, uh, or a wandering tribal ancestor. I've, out of I've, I've done parts of that, actually, at times, where I've just you dropped are a slave. out. Because anytime that you are anytime that you are allowing somebody else to control your destiny in any aspect of it. You have given up a certain part of your freedom. Uh, now, that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. But just understand that's what you're doing. So as time goes on and you give up more and more of your freedom, realize that you are incarcerated and don't even know. And don't be surprised what happens when it happens because incarcerated people, things happen to them because it's supposed to happen. Well, so that's how we keep the system full. Well, you know, the problem is, is that human beings, there's the, the real issue here, the reality of this, planet Earth can support about 20 billion people if we weren't toxifying the planet and destroying it in a natural function. But the planet Earth has too many people living on it right now. So the, the population really have the right cure. Get rid of about five billion people and the planet will continue to survive for a longer period of time. Here's the problem. You can't get rid of five billion people. So Well you can. You just have to have a big war and go underground while the fallout's happening. Right. That's the key. That's why that's why they already have the under, that's why they already have the underground cities built. 
That's why they already have this shit built. Well, sure. Um, you know, th- th- there's, under, uh, there's an underwater aquifer with a pipeline that's about as huge as any pipeline you can in the world build that goes from Lake Michigan in Wisconsin uh, through Wisconsin down into the aquifer of, of, uh, of the Central Plain State and over into Wyoming that holds millions of gallons of water. And yeah, they've been, more- they've been siphoning that for years. This is raining Lake Michigan for probably 70 years. Oh, easily, easily, dude. They have easily. so much water underneath the plain state. It's, it, they, they've replenished the natural aquifer that was there, but they, they've replenished it. The glaciated aquifer that was created when the glaciers pulled back 14,000 years ago um, um, and left their water deposits. And we we constantly are replenishing that. Right. There's no water shortage. No, it it's never has been. designed to create hysteria and control. And to inflate prices. Because Absolutely. it's supply water and demand. Yeah. So is air. You want clean air, you can buy oxygen tanks. Yeah, you can. Why do you think they've been doing stem trips in the World War II? Well, of course, because they keep the... The more they can keep you on synthetics to give you more synthetics, the more money they make. There's no money in curing you. There's no money no. in giving you a holistic cure because they can't make money on it if you can grow your own shit. Hello? Well, when I saw the movie The Matrix in 1994... The Matrix spells it out pretty clearly about what's going on. People are too stupid to realize it. Life yeah, is The I, Matrix. I, I said to that, I went with my buddy Archie Colbert. And we talked, we talked, uh, and I looked at him and I said, 